This is Mayo Clinic Talks, a curated weekly podcast for physicians and healthcare providers. I'm your host, Daryl Chetka, a general internist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. There are numerous stem cell clinics throughout the United States which advertise stem cell therapy for a variety of health conditions. Although they commonly promote treatment of osteoarthritis, some have offered treatment for such conditions as autism, macular degeneration, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and now most recently COVID-19 infections. How can our patients be assured that they're receiving products for health conditions which are safe and the health conditions can be effectively treated with regenerative medicine therapy? We'll be discussing regulations regarding regenerative medicine with Drew Witter, a regulatory program manager in the Office of Research and Regulatory Support at the Mayo Clinic. Drew, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me here today to talk about uh, regulatory affairs and regenerative medicine. Happy to be here. Well, it's an interesting topic. Um, let's start by asking you to go over how you take regenerative medicine from the lab and research to the clinical practice. What, what happens there? Sure. So. Um, you know, re researchers and developers are, need to, reg um, sorry, let's start that over again. Researchers and developers really need to look at the regulations to understand where in the regulatory pathway their product is going to take them. Oftentimes with these stem cell therapies, it involves uh, going through the FDA and obtaining uh, regulatory approval to conduct clinical trials. So any researcher or developer starting with a proof of concept really needs to uh, think about all of the various facets that they need to accomplish in order to get to that uh, investigational new drug submission to FDA. So with, with preclinical work in regenerative medicine, um, it's not quite as established um, as it was in drug development 20 years ago in, in say, the pharmaceutical industry with uh, active pharmaceutical ingredient traditional drug therapies where you knew exactly what sort of preclinical experiments you need to conduct, right? You'd have biomarker studies, um, you know, pharmacokinetic studies, biotransformation studies, GLP tox. Certainly FDA is gonna to wanna to see some of that in your preclinical work, um, but I don't think it's as cut and dry um, in regenerative medicine as we'd like it to be. Um, and certainly thinking about manufacturing aspects uh, of regenerative therapies, right? Because a lot of these um, have manufacturing steps that need to take place in the clinic or the hospital. Um, so you need to think about where, where, what space is that going to take place in? Um, how am I going to make sure that we are compliant with regulatory manufacturing standards? And then finally, what is your um, phase one clinical trial going to look like? So I, I think when developing these regenerative therapies, it's important to look at what sort of institutional resources are available to, to you. Um, is there a regulatory manufacturing group? Is there a regulatory group that can assist you with, with IND submissions? And most importantly, it's to engage early with FDA. So there's, there's various tools on the FDA.gov website that researchers and developers can use. Um, one particular one that I always recommend is an FDA guidance called the Regulatory Considerations of Human Cells, Cellular and Tissue-Based Products, HCTPs. Um, that is really good at defining the terminology of HCTP as well as the associated regulations that you're gonna to need to follow. Um, so most of these regenerative therapies are under the umbrella of the Center of Biological Evaluation and Research at FDA. And they have um, interactive meetings that you can have with regulators to talk about your projects. The, the earliest one you can have is called an interact meeting. That is a rather informal meeting where you can, <clears throat> pardon me, talk about um, where your product currently is, how you see developing it and get their feedback on that development process, um, as well as um, they'll let you know what sort of information they're gonna want in future regulatory submissions. And after that, after you've done some more development work, you go back to FDA and they have what's called a pre-IND meeting 
where you sit down with FDA, you show them the preclinical work that you've done so far, what your manufacturing steps are gonna entail and what you believe your clinical trial protocol should be for a phase one. And they give you very binding responses back and you can ask them very pointed questions about um, what they're gonna to wanna to see in your IND submission. So I think the real takeaway is, is that um, in regenerative medicine, it's, it's good to engage and collaborate with your institutional resources and regulators very early on so that you can quickly get to an IND approval and start validating your regenerative therapy. Mm -hmm.